Today I'm going to be ranking the albums by White Lion. They only have five albums, so I'll probably be spending a little more time on each one. They are a glam metal band that I used to listen to a lot when I first started getting into a heavy metal. They were popular in the late 80s, early 90s, and they took a break and released another album in 2008. So this rank is just my opinion. It will be from worst to best. So with that being said, let me get right into it. Number five is Return of the Pride, released on March 14th, 2008 on Frontier Records. So this was their first album since 1991. The only original member in the band is Mike Tramp. So this is kind of like a Mike Tramp solo album, but it does have that White Lion name attached to it. It has a melodic hard rock sound, but the overall tone of the album is very different. So on this album, uh, we have uh, Jamie Law on guitars, Klaus Langestock on bass, Troy Patrick Farrell on drums and Henny Wayner on keyboards. Actually, their bass player Claus played on a few of Mike Tramp's uh, solo albums. But there are some good stuff here. So this song that's about nine minutes long called Sangre de Cristo. So this is a very epic type of song. It has a slow building, atmospheric sound. Sounds like a typical white line ballad with the clean guitars, but then it gets heavy, kind of like almost like an Iron Maiden type of riff. But the song has those like whoa, whoa, whoa in the chorus. And then it goes back and forth between the heavy and light. lyrics would appeal to fans of uh, Christian metal. He's recounting a few biblical stories. The thing about this song and uh, the album in general is that uh, the vocals sound a lot different than the original, the earlier albums, but they're still pretty good. Then there are other songs that are like hard rockers. So a song like Dream and a song like Live Your Life. Those are just like typical hard rock songs. Maybe like something like Aerosmith. Nothing out of the ordinary. Actually, the chorus to uh, Live Your Life reminded me a lot of like uh, Tomorrow and Tonight by Kiss. Another song, Set Me Free, a typical power ballad. It has some serious lyrical content, talking about being a prisoner in a foreign land. They have a song called uh, The Battle at, Bi Battle at Little Bighorn. And this one's over seven minutes long, talking about Custer's Last Stand. That's and a story from American history dealing with Native Americans, a very big epic type of song. And this is almost like a power metal type of ballad, kind of like mixing a little of that like modern day Iron Maiden, but has some heavy riffs, lots of melodic verses, big choruses, and they do that like a Native American style guitar riff. And overall, the album is not too bad, but it's just very different from all the other White Lion albums. And that's why I have it at number five. And number four, I have Fight to Survive. This was released on November 9th, 1985 in Japan. And in June of 1986 in the US, this is their debut album. Now they had the original lineup. It has Mike Tramp on vocals, Vito Bratta on guitars, Felix Robinson on bass and keyboards, and Nikki Capozzi on drums. Those last two members were replaced by James Lomenzo and Greg D'Angelo by the time the album was released, and that formed the core lineup that would stay together for the next few albums. It's a good album. The production is raw, but the songs um, do have that signature sound. Uh, so the album opener is Broken Heart. It's a power ballad that was re-recorded for their main attraction album. I always liked that song. They have another uh, song about the struggles of Native Americans called Cherokee. And um, that song's a melodic rocker. It has some cool guitar riffs by Vito Brada. You do hear that Van Halen influence on a song like this one. And uh, also the title track, uh, Fight to Survive. That one sounds like it could have been on like an early like, 80s Van Halen album. And, you know, the, the guitar and bass work actually sound very similar. Another song, uh, Where Do We Run? This one has a little more of a harder edge. Maybe it's something along the lines of like Twisted Sister. It's a good song, nothing too special, but it's all good. And the band is known for their lyrics that address social topics. So we have a song like All the Fallen Men that's dealing with men getting killed in, in battle. All Burn in Hell, this has like an 80s metal vibe and a slightly darker edge, but still very melodic. And the song El Salvador. This one has really cool like, guitar acrobatics, has that classical and Spanish guitar instrumental intro. The song gets heavy, a little more a little more closer to like traditional heavy metal. And this is a song about a civil war that went on in the Central American country of El Salvador. It lasted for 12 years from like the late 70s to early 90s. Probably one of their best songs actually. The album is very good, but the, the other ones are just... Number three, I have the main attraction released on April 2nd, 1991 on Atlantic Records. So this is the last album with that core lineup. 
and the last album until Return of the Pride from 2008. I already talked about that one. So on this album, we have Greg D'Angelo and James Lomenjo, but they left the band like right after the album's release. You know, they cited like musical differences, but they were replaced with uh, the bassist uh, Tommy T-Bone Cardona and drummer Jimmy DeGrasso. And this formation of the band only lasted about another year, and then they broke up for a long time. So there are some good songs here. It's a typical hard rock and glam metal album, but they do get a little experimental at times. Uh, the opening track is called Love and Thunder. So this song has been compared to Achilles' Last Stand by Led Zeppelin. One, given the length of the song, and also the chord progression is kind of similar, like right before the first verse. So you do hear those comparisons. But there's a lot of guitar acrobatics and hard rock guitar riffs. The song has some heavy riffs, and it's a good song. They re-recorded Broken Heart. That was from their first album. Um, they did another one, Leave Me Alone. That's a cool song. It's more like funk rock, where similar to a band, maybe like Extreme. That one was okay. Then one of the singles I remember listening to when the album came out. You know, it's called Love Don't Love Don't Come Easy. So, um, do, 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 do you want it? Do, do, do you need it? Cause love don't come easy. So that one, they have a breakup song called It's Over. That's very bluesy. Sounds a lot like White Snake or Deep Purple. Then they get a little heavier with War Song. And that one has like a really heavy drum beat. But their signature style. Then uh, She's Got Everything is a typical glam metal type of song. Uh, similar to like that early Van Halen. You got a lot of guitar shredding in that one. And another ballad, Till Death Do Us Part. It's just a very like sappy uh, ballad. It's about getting married. So just <laughs> it's about that. And Out With The Boys, it's a typical, like a Motley Crue or Poison type of song. Just typical glam metal. Then Blue Monday, Blue Monday, their only instrumental, a tribute to Stevie Ray Vaughan. He had actually just been killed in a plane crash, I think, around that same time. And the final song, Farewell To You, kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy, kind of like, uh, given that it's like their last album for a long time. But anyway... Overall, not too bad, but the others are a lot. At number two is Big Game, released on August 10th, 1989. This one's actually celebrating uh, 33 years on this date, which is not intentional, just happens to be the day I'm posting this. But anyway, the album was released on Atlantic Records and produced by Michael Wagner. On this album, they get a little more experimental. It's not just straightforward glam metal. They do some like classic rock, some heavier stuff, and some other styles. So the first song, uh, Going Home Tonight. This one's a rocker, has a sing-along chorus. Cause I'm going home tonight. You know, something like that. Then uh, that's kind of pretty cool. Then Dirty Woman, you know. Dirty Woman. Na, 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 na. You know, I gotta uh, <laughs> memorize these lyrics. But anyway, that one's uh, pretty cool. It's more that classic uh, glam metal sound. Third song uh, and the lead single, uh, Little Fighter. And this is another single, Rise Again. Little Fighter. This is more of those uh, political songs about a Greenpeace boat. It's actually called the Rainbow Warrior and it was sunk and docked in New Zealand. So that was a big issue back then. Another power ballad dealing with uh, child abuse called Broken Home. This is actually one of their best songs ever written. So that's a really good one. Then Baby Be Mine, a classic uh, glam metal love song. has that signature sound. Song called Living on the Edge. This one reminded me a lot of Van Halen, you know, Vito, Vito Brada playing in that style, influenced by Eddie Van Halen. And Let's Get Crazy, another typical glam metal song about that rock and roll lifestyle. You know, let's get crazy, let's get wild. And um, the guitarist is pretty cool in that one. Very reminiscent of Eddie Van Halen again. Don't Say It's Over, another typical glam metal song about a breakup. It has some heavy riffs, some clean parts in the verse section. And the next song, one of the heaviest songs, uh, called If My Mind Is Evil. This one has like a, this darker tone. Mike Tramp even sounds like a little sinister in this one on the vocals. But it's still glam metal, just like a little heavier type of song. Then uh, Radar Love by Golden Earring. That's a cover. Really good. And... Uh, Another one, Cry for Freedom. This is the good song about apartheid in South Africa. Overall, this is just a very good... At number one is Pride, uh, released on June 21st, 1987. I did a full review of this for its anniversary, so I won't go into too much detail, but it was their breakout album. 
The album had a few hits and it was a straightforward glam metal uh, type of album with a few ballads. First song is called Hungry. This has some of those like Van Halen-esque inspired guitar riffs. Lonely Nights, this one has a cool clean guitar intro. And another rocker with some cool guitar riffs. And this is just about a girl being alone in New York City. New York City. Uh, Don't Give Up, it's a glam rock song with an upbeat vibe. And this is about being like frustrated with life and kind of feeling in a rut. Sweet Little Loving, a typical glam metal song, has this catchy chorus, talking about the 80s rock and roll lifestyle. Lady of the Valley has a faster beat. Uh, this one deals with a serious topic about someone whose brother was killed in a war. Then their big hit, Wait. You know, this is the one I used to listen to all the time. You know, Wait, I never had a chance to love you. And very good song. song. All you need is uh, rock and roll. This one has people like having a good time at a bar. Just a fun song. It's a hard rocker. And another one of those uh, singles is called Tell Me. Has those like guitar acrobatics, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. Kind of opens up like that. And uh, pretty good. Then All Join Our Hands. Uh, that's a good song. A little more than the heavier ones. You do hear it in the vocals and an uplifting uh, call for world peace, which they did a lot. Then uh, Power Ballad, When the Children Cry. Another one that was played on uh, the radio back in the day. Another one of the anti-war songs. Uh, Really good album. That's why it is uh, number one. So that is all. Let me know what you thought in the comment section. Uh, How would you rank these albums? And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.